At 13, Lori Green ran away from her home in Orlando, Florida. While on the road, she met up with a 43-year-old man named Ed Childers. Childers quickly took complete control of Lori's life, even gave her a new name, Deborah. At 15, she gave birth to his son. They moved to a trailer park in Fort Myers, Florida. We went to that trailer park and visited with their neighbor, Jacqueline Kinney. Childers were my neighbors. They lived across the street, Caddy Corner, on Penny Lane. Ed Childers was in his 50s. He was a produce runner. Get your butt in the truck. Hills His son was Ed Jr. We called him Ace. He was uh, about five years old. His wife, Debbie, was young enough to be his daughter. What in the hell is a holdup? Just making lunch for us, Ed. Well, you should have thought about that last night. Get in the truck. Get in the truck! She was 21. A little girl. Real strong. Come on, Ed. I took her under my wings. She was like an older child to me. Debbie and Ed didn't have a good relationship. They fought a lot. Ed was lazy. Debbie worked hard. Uh, when she would complain, he would haul off and hit her, threaten her. Debbie did most of the work. Uh, he barely did anything. He drove. He delivered. She worked. Ain't you done yet? Led, just help me out a little bit. You talk to me that way, you hear? In the beginning, Debbie, she really liked Ed. I think she more or less looked at Ed as a father figure, her being so young. After all, she was only 13 when she ran away with him. Now, Ace, don't get that water in my house. As time passed, police say Childers became more abusive toward his young wife, both verbally and physically. I hope I'm dead before I'm 25. Don't talk that way. You're down now, but things can only get better. Sometimes I think I shouldn't have brought him into this world either. You shouldn't talk that way in front of Ace. And that's not the only time that she had said that. She had said it more and more, time and time again. It was just so sad to see Debbie like that, so depressed, so sad. And it just got progressively worse every day. <laughs> quit, quit. Okay, truth, truth. August 1983. After putting up with Childers and his abuse for eight years, Debbie found another man and a chance for happiness. Well, you better get back to work, darling. See you Tomorrow, or did you forget? Hey, Jackie. Well, don't you look like the cat who swallowed the canary. <laughs> No, you were right. Things have gotten a lot better. Well, honey, just don't let Ed know how good. Well, he's gonna find out when I tell him it's over. Be careful, hon. Yeah. I was happy for Debbie, but also worried. This was the first time she'd been happy in her entire life, and it was something she had to do. I'm leaving. I'll cut your damn head off you try to leave. <laughs> November 6, 1983, 2 a.m. Another late night screaming match began in the children's trailer. But this time, the argument sounded unusually violent. It went on through the night. Ace came running out of the house. He was screaming and hollering. Debbie was screaming. Screaming and screaming. And all of a sudden, the scream just 
got cut off, just like you just shut off a remote on the TV. And Ed came out, and he grabbed the baby by his, his wrist, and he threw him back in the house, and slung him in, and then slammed the door back. And then it got quiet. It stayed quiet for a while. That morning, I had saw Ed and Ace come out of the trailer. They got in the truck, and they left. I didn't see Debbie. Debbie wasn't in the truck. Debbie? Debbie, you in there? I saw the blood oh. everywhere, oh. on the walls, on the floor, oh. and the meat cutter on the counter. And there was blood all over the door, like she had been scratching, trying to get out. And I went in, calling her, no response. So I went through the house looking for her. And I came back home, and I told my sister that Debbie was hurt real bad. Before Jacqueline could get to a payphone to call police, Childers returned with Ace. But still, no sign of Debbie. Ed went in the house, gathered up a bunch of things, and threw them in the back of the truck. He's packing up his stuff, and he's fitting to go. I'm going to go after him. If I'm not back here in 15 minutes, Call the law. Uh, look, find a phone, call them now. And I proceeded to follow him. I got real close to him, real close to his bumper. He knew I was behind him. He knew I was blowing the horn, I was hollering at him. The baby was in the back of the, in the, in the truck turned around backwards, looking back, had his little hands by his face, and he was shouting at me. He was trying to tell me something. Ed, I'm giving that little boy! And I was right on his bumper, and he, he would not stop. He kept going. I looked down, and I realized I was running out of gas, so I had to pull over. You know, Ace had to have seen everything. He had to have heard everything. And the sad part is he has to carry it all of his life. I often wonder what he was trying to say to me. I guess I'll never know. Deputies say Childers drove 400 miles north to Jacksonville. He abandoned Ace with relatives, then took off on the run. Ace was lucky. He's been adopted by a loving family. But his mother met a tragic end. After a three-day search, deputies found Deborah's body, stuffed into a septic tank behind the trailer. Ed Childers was charged with first-degree murder. When he fled, Childers left these photos. You can see what an odd couple he and Deborah made. Friends say Childers is a real slob, the kind of guy who chews with his mouth open. And they say they'd recognize his pigeon-toed walk anywhere. In the past, Childers worked as a produce runner, traveling between Chattanooga and Birmingham, stopping off in small towns like Valleyhead and Ohatchee, Alabama. Just last month, an old friend saw Childers at a gas station in Cottondale, Florida. Childers pulled up and got out of his truck. But when he saw the old friend, he took off. The truck was a flatbed with Florida license plates. Childers had grown a heavy beard. Don't be fooled by this disguise. If you've seen Ed Childers, 
Call our hotline now. 1-800-CRIME-92.